The internet is a big place, but it doesn't have to be scary. Like any quest, we have to make sure we're all prepped and ready to explore before venturing into unknown territory. Welcome to How To Internet, a new series brought to you by MediaWise and PBS Student Reporting Labs to help you learn all the skills that will guide you on your journey to becoming a good digital citizen. This is the fifth video in a series of six. So if you need to catch up, now's a good time to do that. We're almost at the end of our how to internet journey. Now that we've talked about being safe online, searching like a pro, recognizing scams and all that other stuff, let's talk about media literacy as in, what's this? An old phone? What's this text say? Please help, follow this map to the main data hub to return this missing MediaWise cell phone in order to unlock the final episode. Looks like we've got a challenging trip ahead. If we can use our critical thinking skills on this cyber trip, we can make our way to the final episode of how to internet. Let's get going. According to this map, we need to check out the Information Highway, the Unbiased Gardens, Echo Chamber Abyss, and the Web Wisdom Gateway before reaching the main data hub, where we can return the cell phone to unlock the final episode. Now, if there are no more interruptions, let's talk about media literacy and what it means to be media literate, and how using specific skills can help you spot signs and misinformation online. This phone will not stop buzzing. Let's play this game to see if we can get it to stop. Whoa! I'm somehow in the internet and still at home. This is getting too weird. Let's just solve this thing and get out of this traffic jam. It's really bad. It looks like there's a misinformation crash up ahead and everyone is reacting with really intense emotions. Having big feelings like anger, fear, and sometimes even excitement when scrolling on your feed could be a tip off that you're actually facing false information online. When we let our emotions take over, it can cause a really big mess. It's a huge sign to pause for a moment, take a deep breath and research further before sharing anything online. But when we do recognize those feelings and read further, like past the headline of a news article, we can make sure to avoid any more misinformation crashes. Instead of just reading the headline and first paragraph of the story, read through the entire article so you know who the sources are and can evaluate their credibility. But the rest of the story also contains context that you can't just get by reading the headline. Whoa! Looks like recognizing emotions and reading past the headline before causing a wreck is a tip we needed to unlock this thing. On to our next stop, the Unbiased Garden. Whoa, what is this place? The Unbiased Garden sure has a lot of bugs. Hmm, this sign says that the honeybees are mean and bad for the environment. Sign, the Mantis Committee. This sets off my misinfo sensors. As far as I've heard, honeybees are great. We should investigate. I see some ants up ahead. Maybe they can help. Hey little guys, do you know what's up with that sign about honeybees? Can you help me figure out why there's a whole committee against them on the Unbiased Garden? Oh, that's right. And so talk. But it looks like they've made these little signs to help us. Maybe they're clues? One, who is behind the information? Two, what is the evidence? And three, what do other sources say? Hmm, it sounds like I need to do more digging. We know the Mantis Committee wrote the sign. I'm looking to see what others have to say. How about you, ants? Honeybees are cool and helpful. The bees are fine. Well, that's two sources who are backing up the honeybee's character. Let's keep going. What's this? There are more ants with more signs. These ones say, one, finding reliable evidence, two, lateral reading, and three, reading upstream. Oh, I get it. These are the media literacy skills that help us answer each of the key three questions. Let's break this down. To find out who's behind the claim, finding reliable evidence helps keeps us grounded to reality. To find the evidence, we can use lateral reading to quickly gain an understanding from a variety of sources. To try lateral reading for yourself, open a few tabs that a topic or claim you're curious about and read across those sites. You'll walk away with a good general knowledge with details from different places. Lastly, we can read upstream to see what other sources have to say about this information. This also helps us answer, what's the evidence? When you're reading a news article and there is a link to a study or quote, follow that link and the link attached to that, so on and so forth until you reach the original source of info. I'm following the trail in this garden to find that the praying mantis is actually a natural predator of honeybees. That makes sense. Their motivation is to give bees a bad rep for their own benefit. Looks like we got it. Anytime we see something online that we're not sure about, remember to always ask, who's behind the information? What is the evidence? What do other sources say? That means finding reliable evidence, reading up on it from a few sites, finding the original source of what you're looking at. And what I'm looking at is this annoying old phone that really wants us to head to the next stop, the echo chamber abyss. Whoa! <sighs> This thing is not a smooth ride. Is someone else there? Or did we just find ourselves in a media and chamber? I'm getting a really bad feeling about this place. We really need to get out of here. 
fast. When we consume a narrow range of news and media, we can be prone to confirmation bias and we close our minds to other perspectives. Avoid this by consuming a variety of types of news you consume each day. Read a combination of news stories, analysis, and opinion pieces. If you consume liberal media, differentiate your diet by also consuming more conservative perspectives as well, and vice versa. Follow a variety of journalists and public figures on social media to get a diverse range of perspectives. In Lalo Reading, that trick we just used to get out of the unbiased garden is a great way to get a variety of perspectives. Open a few tabs and find out what various news sources are saying about this topic or story. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's time to go. I don't care what the web wisdom gateway is like as long as you get me away from this freaky cave. This is the final stop before we get to the main data hub to drop off this brick of a phone. Aw, I'm gonna miss it. I was just starting to have fun. All right, let's figure out this last puzzle. Whoa, what's this? All I'm seeing is tons of misinformation on my social media feed. What am I supposed to do with this? Huh? I literally didn't do anything. Critical ignoring? Is that when you evaluate and ignore posts and that aim to gain traction and cause controversy? Sick. That was surprisingly easy and stopped any big emotions before they even started. I guess it's time to check out the main data hub. Well, it's time to say goodbye to this bizarre device that I'm not sure I totally understand. I hope MediaWise HQ is able to use this to finish up the final episode of the series. But wait a minute, how do I get home? And now that I'm thinking about it, what does it mean to be media literate? What is media literacy? I'm getting a headache. Not again. Looks like this thing has one more message for us. Thanks for the help. You'll be home soon. Think of media literacy as a big collection of all the tips and tricks you gathered along the way. Okay, can you give me an actual definition, please? Media literacy is the ability to critically analyze information presented in the mass media and to determine its accuracy and credibility. So what does it mean if I say that I'm media literate now? Being media literate just means we use research skills to figure out what's credible, and we're able to communicate in ways that are appropriate and accurate. The way we present ourselves online is a reflection of ourselves. And it's up to all of us to make sure we're taking the time to verify information before sharing it. Keeping in tune with our own emotions and reactions helps make sure we're fighting against the misinformation ecosystem and not becoming a part of it. Hold on, I'm feeling weird again. Oh look, I'm back in my house, but for real this time, no more weird digital graphics flying around my space. What a weird day. Thanks for coming along and helping me out. My mom's never gonna believe I had to deliver an ancient phone to the center of the internet. Actually, maybe I'll keep that one to myself. Now that we've unlocked the final episode, you're going to learn all about how to make your very own fact check video. Exciting. Don't forget to connect with us on social for even more tips and tricks to help you take care of yourself online. See ya.